Hi. Hey. Ember Conf 2015. This has been amazing, right? Uh, so the title of this talk, if I can get it to start, evidently is coming soon. <laughs> uh, and I think that's, that's a apropos because, you know, Tom and Yehuda shouldn't be the only ones who can announce software before it's released. <laughs> but I'll have a little bit more on that later. Um, again, I just wanted to give a big thanks to Leah and Kate and all the volunteers. Uh, you guys are amazing, and this conference has been really spectacular. <clears throat> all right, so I wanted to just uh, give you guys a few stories I have uh, thought of while I've been here. The first is that uh, in June 2008, I went to my first conference ever, and it was at RailsConf, and it was right here at this convention center at, in Portland. Um, I had two open source patches accepted at that point to a little tiny project called SAS that some Rails people used here and there. Uh, and that conference really inspired me and invigorated me, and it left me with this desire to get more involved and more active in my community. Uh, and so about a year later after that, uh, one time I was, Yehuda was ranting about something on, on Twitter, and I asked him a question like, I don't, I'm not really doing what you said, but I feel like my use case makes sense. Uh, we went back and forth on Twitter for a while, and he was like, this is stupid, Twitter sucks, let's chat. <clears throat> and so, it was like 11.15 p.m., and we ended up chatting for about an hour. Uh, he helped me with my problem, uh, explained to me his rationale, we, we sorted it all out. And then we just kept talking, and I thought he was a pretty cool guy, and uh, that started this ability for us, or this internet uh, friendship that we've had for a number of years now. Uh, and. When we finally said goodbye at about 12.15 p.m. or a.m. there, I went to bed and I shook my wife. I'm like, oh my god, I just talked to you know, the cats. <laughs> and she said, that, that's nice, dear. Uh, that was probably good for you. <sighs> uh, we have very narrow fame here in the open source world. Uh, so then, a couple years later, uh, Yehuda sent me a message. He's like, hey, I've got this opportunity. It sounds interesting to me. There's this JavaScript framework. Have you heard of Sprout Core? This guy, Tom, he really wants me to join him on it. Well, what do you think? Should I do it? I'm like, fuck, man. I don't know. It's really risky. Like, frameworks are hard, hard to make successful. Uh, but, you know, if anyone can pull it off, it's probably you. But it's going to be hard. It's going to be real hard. Uh, but I think I had the call. You guys seem to have pulled it off. <laughs> um, all right. So <clears throat> when Yehuda asked why, like, me to come speak here, I was a bit actually kind of surprised, because uh, I'm not an avid Ember user, uh, though that might be changing soon. And, uh, you know, he, he talks a little bit about kind of, I think, why he wanted me to come and talk, but uh, I, I totally get the value of Ember. Like, my very first job was writing JavaScript application. Uh, it, was, it had about 50,000 lines of pure JavaScript. It was my first real job, so it was terrible. Uh, and so I, I definitely saw the value of JavaScript frameworks, unfortunately. There was no such thing back then. Uh, so our app only worked in IE5. Uh, so then I started, so I made this thing called SAS, and uh, I figured that they wanted me to come talk a little bit about that. So um, I have a few things I wanted to say. Uh, just real quick show of hands, you use SAS. Can I? Awesome. 
Okay, so not completely in, un, invaluable. <laughs> um, I have a great job. I, I work at LinkedIn, and at LinkedIn they really do love open source software. Uh, we like to use it, we like to contribute to it, uh, and we're hiring. Uh, they pay me to do open source development for a good portion of what uh, I do, and it's pretty awesome. So, actually, one of the things I've been trying to do lately is get Ruby SAS to work nicely uh, in JavaScript applications of various sorts. And I have not had a good time with this. Uh, I think that the impedance mismatch between getting Ruby and its ecosystem to play nicely with uh, JavaScript and its ecosystem has been really a pain in the ass. And so, after trying and spending months and months to try to make it decent, we decided to take a little bit different approach. Uh, in particular, one of the things that's really been troubling us is the performance of Ruby SAS, and we've worked on it. I've spent months chasing down performance issues there. Natalie is working on some interesting ideas, but uh, I really feel like libsass is where the future is for uh, SAS development, and so I'm putting a lot of my weight behind making that successful right now. Uh, so if you go to the SAS organization on GitHub, you'll see libsass there, you'll see node SAS. Like these are, these are SAS projects, and uh, we are working really hard to make them successful. For those of you who don't know what libsass is, it's a C++ implementation of the SAS uh, compiler. And so <clears throat> we've made this uh, new project called iGlass. And what it does is it leverages the capabilities of Node SAS and brings us basically NPM and the, the, the ecosystem, a lot like what Ember does, where you're able to install add ons and it automatically discovers them. It basically does this for SAS. Um, it'll be able to integrate with a number of different build systems, including Ember CLI. And depending on your style sheets, you'll see speed ups of uh, considerable time. My guess is that we've seen numbers, ah, we've seen numbers on the order of 5x, we've seen people who report numbers of 100x, so you're gonna get a big speed up if you're switching over to libsass. Uh, so one of the reasons that I started focusing on iGlass right off the bat as the first thing is that iGlass is really, it's, it's, it's meant to bring community to uh, the libsass ecosystem and especially to the JavaScript community uh, for, the, for the SaaS users. And, and so we've got, that, that, that's really the thing that Compass in my mind always was, was an ability to let people share their style sheets with each other. Uh, and so I'm not, you know, Yehuda's like, Chris is really great at maintaining things. Um, <laughs> so Compass is kind of end of life at this point. Like, eyeglass is gonna be the, <laughs> iGlass is going to become what, what Compass was, probably for the, for the JavaScript community. I still have to maintain the Ruby side of things for a number of years, so it's not disappearing right away, but that's where the active development is going. So what iGlass isn't is a CSS prefixer. It's not a bunch of SAS mixins to help you do CSS resets. Like, that stuff is, is handled better by the, by the community, Auto prefixer is awesome, is awesome, like use that. Uh, and so with iGlass, we're able to get, ex get the extensions in, let them play nicely with each other, and give you access to uh, a community of people who are distributing their style sheets, just like code that you can get access to via nice systems like NPM. I hear some people don't like NPM. So we have a developer preview. Uh, we can't actually release it until Node SAS 3.0 comes out. That should be in the next couple of weeks. 
Uh, and if you're interested in helping develop or building extensions on top of it, we would love to have your help. So one of the reasons that I was focusing on this first uh, in terms of bringing SAS to uh, our JavaScript environment was that community is probably the number one factor in the success of frameworks like Ember, frameworks like SAS. You know, people come for the technology, they see the value of it. I think they stay for the love. But community is not an accident. It's something that has to be baked in from the beginning when you're designing your software. It's especially integral to frameworks. And community is how our software is built. It's how it's extended. It's how it's maintained. And it's how it succeeds. The community is people like yourselves. And the Ember core team, they know this. Like, they have focused on community from day one. They develop in the open. They make sure that things like add-ons work great. Um, and, you know, it's, it's much harder to take something that was developed in a closed ecosystem and just, like, airdrop it onto the internet and have it have a vibrant community than it is if you build it from the ground up like Ember has. So I'm going to let you in on a little secret about how to make a vibrant community. Just be excellent to each other. Honestly, how fucking hard is it to just be nice? Uh, actually, it's kind of hard. Um, it's, it's super easy to be nice to nice people. It's a little bit harder if they're naysayers. It's harder. They walk in, there's some entitled jerk posting on your issue tracker. If you've had a bad day, they've had a bad day. Things get out of hand pretty fast. And on the internet, our words are cached indefinitely. It's pretty easy if you're a jerk for someone to be able to pull that up for all time and say, see, they're a jerk. Uh, moms are great. Uh, but this is real. Like, if you're sitting around, you're like thinking about saying something maybe not super nice, just shut it up. In the SaaS community, we have had a problem with this, and it's, it comes from a place of love. We want to share about SaaS. It's so much better than what you do. Whatever it is you do, it's so much better than that. We want to tell you about it. Uh, and, and so I was the first SaaS hole. I would walk around telling everybody how they were doing it wrong. They were using CSS. <clears throat> and if they had just used SaaS, it would have been better. Uh, right, so JavaScript community, something I've noticed uh, Y'all are kind of jerks to each other sometimes. Uh, open source community, actually, uh, uh, abroad, I would say that we could all be a lot nicer to each other. Uh, I'm pretty sure that every conference has at least one of these. <laughs> so, unsurprisingly, there were some replies. Um, and, you know, I get it. I'm guilty of this, too. Um, Marcellus Wallace actually said it best. Fucking what you Fuck pride. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, we get invested in our open source, open source contributions. Like, we're not getting paid to develop 
this stuff. We're doing it because we love it. We're, we've probably had some like, really awesome idea, and we invested our nights in it and our weekends. Um, but when people attack it, they're not attacking you. They're attacking that idea or whatever it is, and you have to find a way to separate, it, separate yourself from it. Uh, I had a really hard time with this, and at one point in time in my career, I actually went and got therapy uh, so that I could learn how to not get angry. Uh, not a bad thing to try. So if you're sitting around, and especially if you have Twitter on, and you have some feels, you know, that, that feeling in your head, your eye, maybe your eyes wobble a little bit, you're like, oh, this is clever, I'm going to get them. <laughs> Step away from the keyboard for a minute. Uh, right, so I had a few things to say as well. And I think that so it's important to know that if you stop and you think about these things for a little bit, maybe it's not a competition. Like, maybe we can just all win. Like, And, you know, Jer Jeremy's a pretty cool guy, I guess. He, he backpedaled a bit um, and kind of said nice things. And I agreed. I actually had said this at around the same time. Uh, you know, this isn't good UX. This, this is a benchmark. People, we do it to stress test the way our things work. Um, but I think, I think there is a conundrum here, right? Because, like, we have to, we're competing with each other, but it, how do we do that without being negative? Like, it's, it's pretty natural. We have to form comparisons, and they're natural, and they're necessary, and it's really easy for them to be harmful to the tone of the conversation. Uh, it's super easy to attack their weaknesses and ignore their strengths. I think this was from IE8. Yeah, they have security. but they all have the web standards down. Uh, right, so let's be honest. We're all, we're all software engineers here. Uh, your software is making trade-offs. Like, your job is to make the trade-offs between any number of countless things. You have to make those decisions at an architectural level, at a code level. And if you only attack somebody's weaknesses and you don't recognize their strengths, you're not being fair to your competitor. And you're not going to be respected as a fair evaluator of things. And so I would just like encourage everybody, like if you have to, if you're comparing things on the internet, like the goal isn't to say, make your thing better, but to say what your thing is better at. And the other thing is probably good at something else. And everybody's working at their hardest on it to make something great. So we have to respect our competitors. All right. So I love this quote, because if you have learned to disagree without being disagreeable, then you have discovered the secret of getting along, whether it be business, family relations, or life itself. And for me, this has really been true. Wow. Really been true. Uh, so I had an idea. What if, what if Jeremy had said this? I was curious how Backbone would perform using the same performance benchmark as Ember and React pretty happy with the results, and just threw that out there. Like, how much different of a conversation would that have been? Would people on this side of the equation have responded as adversarially as they did if he had come out with a more diplomatic way of publishing his results? I think it's important to respect our audience enough uh, to let them draw their own conclusions. Furthermore, I think confidence is a lot about knowing that sometimes you don't have to engage. Uh, so there was this time when I was younger, I had a sports car. Uh, it was an Audi TT, it wasn't like the greatest sports car in the world, but uh, I was stopped at a stoplight and this guy drove up, I don't even know what he was, it was like a souped up something or another, and, and he like revved his engine at me. I'm like, oh, he wants to race, interesting. And I rev my engine back at him, and 
Uh, but I knew I could beat him. I wasn't interested in racing him. So light turns green, that guy tears off as fast as he can. And I just kind of took off, went on my merry way. Why take the risk of me getting a ticket or whatever else, accident? There was, no, there was no benefit for me in having that argument, that conversation, that race. Um, but yet when I was doing open source software, people started criticizing what I had done or saying that some idea was dumb. Like, literally people were like, CSS processors are stupid. And I'm like, no, they're not. Um, and finally, some, a guy on the internet, his name is Jeff Croft, he pulled me inside, he's like, dude, stop defending what you make so much. Like, it's good, your work speaks for itself, just let it go. And so I would just say, guys, like, Ember is really good. Let it go. Um, and you know what, SAS didn't lose when I started ignoring the haters. Uh, in fact, we're doing fine. Right, so hey Tom, uh, at the speaker dinner you said something along the lines of, I feel like Ember is like, is beleaguered, like similar to like Apple was in its early days. Uh, so I actually wanna challenge that perception a little bit. Um, I do think that this idea has actually served you guys really well, because I know how motivating it can be. Uh, but I just wanna guys ask you, I wanna ask you a question, like, why is Ember going to win? There's 625 of you here, you're all betting on Ember. Why is it going to win? I heard it's because of us. Leadership, good leadership. Come on. Excellent backwards compatibility and upgrading. That's super important. Tooling, good. All right, so that was kind of a trick question. <clears throat> what does it mean to win? I don't, I don't even know, I don't even know what this means. Like, do you, do you wanna have the most users? Do you wanna be the fastest? Do you wanna have the most big brands adopting your software? Do you want it the easiest to adopt? Like, there are so many metrics upon which you could draw success, and you probably can't win at all of them because the fucking trade-offs again. So my dad once said something to me that I thought was pretty cool. He's like, find a job you love and you'll never work a day in your life. And I don't think he made that up. I think he heard it somewhere. <laughs> but I'm going to tell you that if you use a framework that you love, you'll never work a day in your life. And so well, the question I have for you guys is, if you love Ember, raise your hand. Right on. For those of you who didn't raise your hand, come on, I know you wanted to. <laughs> <clears throat> so congratulations, you may have already won. If winning means being number one, I would just say like, be really careful what you ask for because you just may get it. Number one means being the default choice, that means your support's gonna be way harder. You're gonna be picking up users who are less experienced. Community, good luck. Uh, do you, who here wants to enter a lottery to attend EmberConf 2020? <laughs> no? You, you have, you're lucky, huh? All right, <laughs> not me, I always, I never get it. Um, I would actually argue that being number two is the sweet spot. And there, this is actually borne out in history time and time again. Uh, people are going to be picking you because you're a good fit. Be, you're going to have to do less supports. So you're going to be able to spend more time on making quality products, uh, better features. And because you are having a better fit of users, you're going to have a much more awesome community. I, wouldn't, I don't think that Apple has actually won now. I think, I think Apple's won at this point. Uh, I don't think it was in spite of being beleaguered. 
I think it was because of it. They were able to take a different approach. They could focus on being good at their niche markets and being really great on quality. Um, and many of you guys may not realize it, but SAS was actually number two for most of its life. Uh, in the beginning, there was CSS, and SAS was just kind of this thing, and CSS was the competitor. Uh, not long after SAS had started to break through, less came along. Less was super easy to pick up. Its syntax was better, and they gained a ton of momentum. And that definitely inspired us to catch up. But, uh, but actually, less ended up growing too fast. They picked up so many users. People, and they, they kind of just collapsed under the weight of their own community. Uh, you know, I had, I had heard from the maintainer that it was just so hard for him because he felt like all he ever did was user support and hardly had any time to work on making the quality that he wanted to make. So uh, just like in racing where you, know, you, you let the guy in front do all the hard work, you let him cover all the hard stuff and then you're, you're kind of just drafting behind and then right at the end, then maybe you can win. Uh, so I'm not telling you to stop learning from other people, but maybe don't view it as a competition so much. Uh, do what you do because you love it. Use what you use because you love it. And if you do that, you'll probably just end up being number one anyway. And by then, you'll probably be ready for it. Thank you very much. Uh, I've loved hanging out with you guys this last couple of days. I hope you'll keep in touch with me on Twitter. Um, I'm super excited to be making SAS uh, easier for you guys to use. And I, I got to tell you, I have some really exciting ideas for how SAS and Ember can work together to make some, some new innovations beyond where we're even at right now. Thank you. <laughs>